Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back with another video for you guys and in this video we are going to learn about creating a floating action button for Ionic applications which hides when you scroll the page towards the bottom and shows up again when you scroll the page towards the top. This button has been used widely in many modern applications including Facebook and LinkedIn. So if you look at the app on your screen you can see that the button hides as you scroll the page towards the bottom and the button shows up again as you scroll the page towards the top. The same functionality has been implemented in the LinkedIn Android app as well. So as I scroll the page towards the bottom, the button hides and it shows up again when I scroll the page towards the top. And this hiding and showing mechanism is animated. So let's build that. So here I am starting with a blank Ionic application and in this blank Ionic application I will just go straight to my home.html file inside the pages folder in my src folder. So this html file contains the html code for my only page. So I'll just remove the code from here that already exists and I'll paste in a lot of html code so that I have a lot of scrolling on the page. So as you can see that now that I have a lot of content on the page I can easily scroll the page. Okay, now that I have all this content, all I need to do is create the ion fab. So I'll use the ion fab component for that. And inside this ion fab, I'll create a button. So I'll create a button using the button tag and applying the ion fab directive. Inside this ion fab button, I'll put in an icon using the ion icon component. And I'll just give it a name and the name will be create. So this will be similar to the icon that we see in Facebook and LinkedIn. Let's save the application and see how it looks. So you can see that I have got the fab button but the position is not good. So I'll change the position to bottom right corner. And I'll also change the icon to iOS create outline. And now you can see that the icon is just perfect and the position of the fab button is also like we want it. Okay, I'll also place in a reference name here using the hashtag. So the name will be fab and using this fab name I can actually access this fab if I need to. I'm just doing this for now. Now I'll just go ahead and create a new Ionic directive because we want to add some functionality to an existing component. We will create a directive. So I'll just do Ionic G directive and then the name of the directive which is auto hide. So this creates a new directive folder inside the SRC folder and inside that folder I have a folder called auto hide. I also have a file inside this folder which is called directives.module.ts file which I do not need as of now and all I need to do now is just import this directive in my app.module.ts file and pass it in the declarations array as well. So I'll just do that, save the file and close it. Now all I need to do is just use this directive in my HTML file. So you can see that the selector auto hide and I'll just use this selector on my ion content in home.html and I should be good to go. So I'll just check console log in the browser and if I see the console log from my directive it means that everything is good so far. You can see that I get this console log and if you get this console log it means that you have done everything correctly as of now. Now we can proceed further. So the first thing that we will do is hook into the scroll event which is fired whenever the ion content on our page is scrolled. Okay, so the name of the event is ion scroll and we can hook into this event using the host property inside our directive decorator. So I'll just type in host and I'll pass in a JSON object to this host property. This JSON object takes in the name of the event which is raised. So the name of the event is ion scroll. And the function that should be called every time this event is raised is on content scroll. We will create this function in just a moment. This function will also get a parameter which contains the information about the event. So all I need to do now is create this function. So I'll just go ahead and create that. I'll also pass in a parameter. Let's call it E. And for now what we can do is just log E to the console. Okay. So now we head back to our application. We should see console logs as I scroll the page in the app. So I'll just resize the console a little bit and I'll resize the app a little bit as well. And you can see that as I scroll I get a lot of console logs in the console. Each console log contains a property called scroll top which actually contains a number that tells us how much the user has scrolled in pixels. 
okay so if i scroll more the value of scroll top increases if i scroll towards the top the value of scroll top actually reduces to zero ultimately so we will use the value of scroll top to identify if the user is scrolling towards the top or if the user is scrolling towards the bottom so we will do that before doing that we need to get a reference to our fab button so i'll just create an object called fab to hide and i'll also create a number called old scroll top and i'll default its value to 0 now i cannot do anything in my constructor because the view is not initialized when our constructor is executed and we cannot get reference to any components in our view so i'll have to use ng on in it instead and get a reference to my fab button and store it inside our object fab to hide so i'll just type in this dot fab to hide is equal to but here i need to import two modules the first one is renderer and the second one is element ref once i have imported these two modules i'll have to pass them through my constructor so i'll just do that real quick and now i'll use this dot element dot native element and here i'll use the function get elements by class name which takes in the name of the css class which is applied to the component that you want to get a reference to so i know that fab class is applied to the fab button and since this returns us an array i just want to get the first element so i'll just pass in the index zero so this gives me a reference to my fab button and i have that object stored inside fab to hide okay now i just need to find out if the user is scrolling towards the top or towards the bottom so to do that what i can do is subtract the current scroll top value from the scroll top value that we received when this event was fired the last time so if the difference is positive it means that the user is scrolling towards the bottom but if the difference is negative it means that the user is scrolling towards the top so i'll just use old scroll top number to store the previous value of scroll top and i'll just subtract the values and if the difference is greater than 10 you can use 0 if you want then i'll just log down to the console otherwise i'll just check if the difference is negative or less than 0 then i'll just log up to the console and finally what i'll do is just store the value of current scroll top in our old scroll top number so this will update the value of old scroll top every time let's see if we get these console logs now so i'll just scroll the app page towards the bottom and you can see that i get a console log down which tells me that i'm scrolling down if i scroll towards the top i'm getting console logs telling me that I am scrolling up okay so I am getting these console logs which is useful because I want to hide and show this button based on whether the user is scrolling up or down so now all I need to do is use this dot renderer dot set element style function to show and hide this fab button inside the set element style function i can pass in the reference to my fab button which is this dot fab to hide and the second parameter is going to be the css property that i want to modify which is opacity in this case and i'll set its value to zero which will hide the button and if the user is scrolling towards the top then i just want to set opacity to one let's save this and see if it works I do not need to see console anymore so I'll just minimize this for now and increase the size of the app so that you can see better and now if I scroll towards the bottom you can see that the button hides if I scroll towards the top the button shows up again so scrolling down button hides scrolling up button shows that's what we wanted but we wanted this to be animated so to make this transition animated we will again use the set element style function on our fab to hide to specify that every transition related to opacity should take about one second or half a second and the second parameter is going to be webkit transition which will make sure that the transition takes some time and the third parameter is going to be opacity and then the time that it should take so i'm just gonna specify 500 milliseconds so now if we scroll towards the bottom the button takes 500 milliseconds to hide 
and this creates an animation. If I scroll towards the top, the button shows up and takes 500 milliseconds to show up and you can see that the effect now looks a lot better than before. Now this is not enough for me, what I want is that the size of the button should also be modified as the button is hidden. So I just do not want to vary the opacity, I also want to vary the size of the button. So as the button hides, I want to modify its scale as well. So I can use WebKit transform for that and the parameter is going to be scale 3D to which I'll have to pass in three parameters the X value, the Y value and the Z value. So I'll just pass in 0.1 in all these three parameters which will resize the button to 10% of its original size on all three axes. When the user is scrolled towards the top, I'll resize its value 200%. So I'll just pass in one in all three parameters to scale 3D. And to make this effect animated as well, I'll specify a timing to WebKit transition as well for the transform property and it is going to be 500 milliseconds as well. Make sure that you separate these two properties, transform and opacity with a comma. Now if I scroll towards the bottom, the button is hidden and the animation looks a lot better than before and this is actually what we wanted. If I scroll towards the bottom, the button hides and this hiding and showing animation is way too good. This is all we wanted. This is exactly what happens in the Facebook and LinkedIn app. So this is what we want you to create in this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you face any problems while doing this in your applications, make sure that you check out the code on the GitHub repo on this URL and you can also download the code and use it in your applications. Like this video, share it with your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching.